Thank you, everyone. This is a privilege to be the first speaker, and I also want to acknowledge Stephen Hawking. He um, was an amazing scientist for the universe, basically, and um, carried on where Einstein left off and uh, you know, discovered new things about uh, the origins and where we're, where we're going in terms of black holes, even. And so totally a, a huge, and a very much a public speaker, and this is something that we should all aspire to. So take a moment and think broadly about him. So how can I even continue after such a person? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to talk to you about the, uh, basically the fossils and the geology associated with those fossils off the, the west coast of Vancouver Island, the edge of Vancouver Island, and in the offshore, and actually a little bit of the connection to the Olympic Peninsula. And, um, these fossils are based, these, this history, this geological history is basically kind of like, I put it like our laboratory for today because it's talking about the last 55 million years in terms of the geological history, but it's like the last bits that have basically collided and are still colliding with the North American continent and basically have, um, are compressing, and we'll see it and I'll show you a map in a minute, but it's very complex. Um, but it's basically farming the mountains of British Columbia and it's still going on today. And when we have our big earthquake, that's part of it. And uh, so this is the stage. And so 55 million years is sort of what we're dealing with from the edge of Vancouver Island off into the offshore and the sediments that are out there. And some of the initial work of this was actually started here at this museum, but also with the Geological Survey of Canada in the early, I'm sorry, the mid to late 1800s. And so we have some of those fossils that were collected by Charles Newcomb here at the museum. And much of this geology was discovered by people in the Geological Survey and probably the ministries too here associated with government. And so some of those early names like Richardson, um, Clapp, Cook, and Newcomb, of course, in there too, but we have another other scientists, and they've carried on since that time frame too, like Clark and Arnold, who were the first to really describe the fossils from the Souk Formation, which I'll be talking about today. And so where do I fit into this story? Well, I've been working on this since about 2000 um, with the Coast Under Stress Project, first associated with the University of Victoria and Chris Barnes, and a group of about 60 um, scientists, uh, social scientists and natural scientists under the Coast Under Stress Project. And I've been carrying forth this research and actually the tail end of it now here is at the, the, the Royal BC Museum where we're tying in the macrofossils. And, um, and so what I've done is um, when we do this kind of research, which is geoscience-based research, you've got to pull together a lot of people to understand the complex history associated with this. And so you'll see a number of um, researchers here, and some of them have been left off, but oh, here they are down here. Um, those are some of the people from the Royal BC Museum that have contributed knowledge and research papers and specimens and identifications for us. And um, we also have an, um, Elizabeth Dion with Heritage Branch who is looking at um, what we're doing and understanding from that. And we also have people from um, with, um, the University of Victoria and Southern California and um, actually Japan and Russia. So I just wanted to tell you that we have a broad diversity of people. So here's this map I was talking about. And what I mainly want to show you here, and we can't see the arrows, so that's too bad. Oh, here we go. Is that here's Vancouver Island here. That's Rangelia. That was the first component to accrete. And here's, and what I mean by accrete is affixed to the North American continent through plate tectonic processes. And then we have in the blue here, the Pacific Rim terrain, a little bit on the Brooks Peninsula. So the Brooks Peninsula is up here. Victoria is down here. And this is another terrain that a, a, basically, a, amalgamated with the North American continent after Van Gelliga, Vancouver Island, and um, it was about 55 million years ago. And then in the reddy, pinky color here is the crescent terrain. And so what we have are these terrains that have been accreting and, and agglomerating, you know, sticking to the North American continent and Vancouver Island, and then we have the sedimentary packages that have come after that. And here's the current deformation front. 
And so if you look at, this is a line right here, a seismic line, and this is a cross-section of it. So here you see Vancouver Island, Rangelia, the Pacific Rim terrain, the Crescent terrain, and the Cascadia Accretionary Complex, and this subducting Wanda Fuca plate. And that's the plate that all this is riding on, and, or older plates, and these have accumulated on the edge of Vancouver Island. And also, the Olympic Peninsula where it forms into a bend. So what we have is this hugely complex area of accumulation of terrains. And what this means is that we're using the fossils and the geology of many diff different types of geology, geophysical evidence, to help tell this whole story. And on all these scientists, and this has all happened over the last 30 to 40 years. And we're bringing this story together for you. And this sets the stage for, this is our modern day laboratory, believe it or not, in geological terms, even though it's 55 million years to the present day. But it sets the stage for letting it, helping us understand the geological evolution of British Columbia and the mountain building, which has occurred over the last 200 million years. And so before all that are earlier terrains and rocks that have collided, and we use those fossils and geology to understand that process. So in a much simpler terms, this is Vancouver Island, some souk up to just Barkley Sound, Pachina Point here. And basically, we're studying fossils along the edge of Vancouver Island is the last part of this project. And we're using strontium isotopes, which are an isotope signature to give us an absolute date. And we're using that on the microscopic fossils. So we're using the fossils themselves to provide information about the location and the position and age. And we're actually using that in combination with strontium, so it's a much stronger interpretation of the age of the rocks. And what we're dealing with here are 33.6 million years at the oldest component to 25.5 million years. And this is very novel for this area because we weren't able to do this further up island because the rocks were too altered. But they're unaltered at this location or very low alteration so we can have these dates. And so this is going to be forming part of the final paper we'll be writing on this. And in the offshore, we can do the same. We can do these dating techniques. And so we can compare this to the offshore. So I'm going to jump, so that's just the micro part of it. I'm going to jump now to the macrofossils, which are now at your museum here, and some beautiful collections by people like Ray Graham and Steve Suntock, who have found some amazing fossils and other people. And so these are some examples of the vertebrate remains, the behematops paper. I'll show you. There's a pile of papers right there. We have a publication on that. And Cornwallis, which was one of the early ones discovered in, in the early 1900s. Um, these are um, sea cows that live along the coastline. They look a bit like that. More recently, Gary Kaiser and uh, Junya from Japan, Junya Watanabe, published on the new fossil bird, which is here on the west coast of British Columbia. Very exciting news. We have whale vertebra and some scapulas of an unknown mammal. And we also have a chimerid shark, which is currently being worked on by myself, and the Russian from, um, at Saratov University. And we have many mollusks that are being studied by Tom Colburn and others here. And what we do when we go out to the site, we look at the, the sections here and the geology. And um, there's a whale vertebra being discovered there. And what we've discovered actually here, we're using the fossil. There's a, there's a, a certain type of um, mytilus clam that marks a bed here and the gastropod intervals. The gastropods are here. And we're able to actually see about two meters displacement. So here's an example of like a big mega thrust earthquake that might have happened in the past. We don't know the timing because we haven't been able to get up into this upper part of the section there. But we have been able to determine with the fossils themselves two meters displacement at this particular section at Mirror Creek Beach. So in summary, how am I doing? I got a minute left. So I've talked to you a bit about this information at the top, but what I want to talk to you about are the other deliverables, aside from probably the five to seven publications that have come out since I've been here, um, on the various fossils from the Souk Formation and the Carmana Group rocks along the west coast of Vancouver Island, is that we're now going into a new phase of how we can transfer this knowledge at the museum. 
either, well, as I've been taking field trips out to the site quite a bit, and we've taken a group from the Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations that are looking at the Muir Creek site as a potential new heritage site, and they're doing an assessment of that. Um, we also involved the locals quite a bit on this field trip and, and um, got a lot of interest and I found out that people from all over the world are coming by and, and know about this site and it was worthwhile talking to them on the site about that. In fact, it would happen when we were digging out that one um, whale vertebra. And um, we also are doing, um, we hope to do some community boards at that site. We have the um, the Alliance of Natural History Museums of Canada, the behemothop specimen, the Cornwallis specimen was on display in that, and that's going for three years. And we hope to do a pocket gallery here in the fall of this year. So, um, and then moving forward on the heritage protection, and hopefully that will all be timely this fall. So thank you very much, and those are examples of the publications.